Today is completely a discussion open to you all's questions or ideas, as well as we can brainstorm with you any thoughts you have and share any experiences that we've seen over the years. Um, Jennifer, do you have anything off the, like, burning questions you want to start with? She's just hoping to hear ideas. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, so this discussion actually came about because we had a few um, grants applied for in this last session on vending machines and doing uh, book vending machines at other locations. And part of what came up in that discussion is the different aspects it takes to install a book vending machine. Um, and people were wanting to kind of discuss it then, but we um, suggested that we could host one of these to give it a chance to do that. Um, Jennifer, do you have an area in mind that you're hoping to be able to f provide services to? Because that makes it a little bit easier to kind of bubble up ideas. No I'm problem. just going to take a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are going to be waiting uh, about 10 minutes or so to see if anybody else joins us. Um, hey, everybody. Um, so I remember from the grants thing that the vending machine came up and we were discussing some of the unthought about cost of doing a vending machine. Sandy, are you remembering uh, much about that discussion? Sandy, do you have any thoughts? Um, I stepped away, I'm sorry. Oh, not a problem. <laughs> What were uh, what were the um, what were y'all talking about? Uh, when we did the grants meeting, this last one, we had talked about some of the unthought about cost of doing vending machines that wasn't um, that came up during that discussion. I know some of it was the installing of a concrete pad and electrical work to put in a vending machine at a different location. Um, can you think of some of the other costs that people forget to calculate in? I don't think they would forget to calculate it, but of course collection. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the, the whole dynamics of um, feeding it, in other words, making sure, you know, having staffing who could actually go and, um, and restock it uh, would certainly be a, um, another, another cost to it. The, um, and I think you just said this, the whole um, electronic, you know, the hooking it whatever needing to be hooked up to, and I don't really, it's not, it's, it's one of those things that they didn't have them when I was out in the real world, um, so I'm less familiar with uh, with the book uh, bending machines. The um, other thing is to think about the location of where they are put. I know that, I think it was way back, Osceola got a vending machine, and I think it was to go into a, um, I'll call it a housing project or something like that. And the, the challenge with the, the vending machines to some degree at that time, and again, this has been a good while back, um, is it doesn't really market itself. <laughs> it doesn't say, hey, come over here and check me out <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so I think that's another another um, dynamics of using the vending machine that's really not necessarily connected uh, with, a, with a person. And I know that there is a the webinar uh, that was done a while back that documented the experience of Gladys Roberts has one at a welcome center mm -hmm. to serve the northern part of, unserved part of their county. Um, that I think worked okay, and I guess it's the same way in um, to some degree. But getting you know issuing library cards, you right. know, how do you get you know how how's that done? Again, I, since I'm not familiar 
with the with the dynamics of it. Um, actually, what I think is really cool is that whole model that's out there where you can just get short stories. What you know, a, a machine that just gives you a short story to read. Mm -hmm. um, I know that that's a sort of not a vending machine, but it is. I mean, it has some of the same features. It gives you stuff to read, and you don't have to return it. So that's another model that I'm curious about. I'm trying to remember. seems like it was one or two libraries in Florida, and I know this really got hot, and uh, Brendan, and you may know as much, in Europe, it seems to me. Yes, um, it is a major feature that pops up in Europe um, in various locations. Yeah, I just, I think that's pretty okay. cool. Thank you, Casey. I was looking it up myself. I'm glad you beat me to it. Casey, where in France, or where did you um, see that? Yeah, France, that's right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. but I know that they were specifically popping up or they started getting attention in like the subway stations and the rail stations where people were sort of on the go, but then we're going to be sitting for a while. Mm -hmm. But France is typically the, the country that I hear it most associated with. Okay. Are we talking about the, sorry, this is Emily. Uh, are we talking about the short story vending machines uh, right now? The short story That's what printer? Mm -hmm. I believe somewhere in South Florida may have one now. Right, that's what I think too. I can't remember where. It, it's I, Fort Lauderdale or Miami or, or one of those yeah. two. Right, right. Um, and I guess uh, what, is this all for all kinds of of outreach possibilities as well as the vending machines? This uh, discussion. Yes, we're kind of brainstorming and uh, generating different ideas to help um, people reach uh, populations that aren't traditionally able to get to. Right, and I guess the the old-fashioned one that still has somewhat of a life, of course, is the variation of a um, bookmobile. Mm -hmm. um, I know Indian River, the library director there, is looking at buying a bookmobile. Um, and now there's so much that you can do with it with the technology. Uh, there's pluses and minuses to, to certainly to to bookmobiles. They are very expensive to um, purchase. They take a while to build. But um, in some, where I found the bookmobile is is useful in testing out a location. So if you have a bookmobile that sort of moves around or um, you can find out whether there are enough customers in that area during the time that the bookmobile is there to should we open a library outlet or not. Because one thing about a bookmobile versus a um, library outlet, you can move bookmobiles around. If you open a library outlet, the, cust the people, even if they didn't use it very much, they come out of the woodwork protesting, don't close down my library. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have, had that experience uh, uh, in the, in the past. So, well, Casey just, was able to find where in um, South Florida we have that vending machine. That is West Palm Beach. Oh, West Palm Beach is it? Is it the the Mandel Library or the probably? It seems like it might um, be. They didn't they didn't say it was affiliated with any of the libraries, but just that there's some downtown in West Palm Beach. I, I, I think it's probably with the city library versus the county system. It f seems like it is, but I'm not certain um, with it. And there's, um, you know, the other sort of model taking out um, maker spaces. You know, having portable maker spaces would be another way of doing outreach in a fun, interesting kind of way. Um, it's, you know, it's taking it a lot further than the the um, the the uh, you know the the equipment you know you're really scaling it down uh, there and so that's another certainly another way as far as outreach mm -hmm. um, and doing going out and about and these are really old fashioned but programs certainly is a, is another way um, again I showing my we used to show films um, we'd get the Disney films and go around 
rural North Florida and show those and they were really quite popular at that time but was, again this has been a good while back and it was really old-fashioned 16 millimeter films uh, that we were showing um, um, and, and a great place to do it um, anytime if you have a mall or even a Walmart believe it or not will partner with community groups and allow them to put machines within their buildings or outside of it um, so absolutely yeah I absolutely can that's another another really good outreach model that is that's there mm -hmm. um, and again we actually drove our bookmobile into the mall and parked it there for a while inside the mall <laughs> oh awesome yeah yeah it was I was our medium-sized bookmobile that we had that we had at the time so it's interesting to sort of think what kind of things are being done here today you know uh, certainly the food programs you know could be a, a portable and popular portable thing to take out to a housing project and since food is such a hot hot topic literally and um, you can take camping stoves work out quite nicely for that they now have yep. really fancy camping kitchens yep, make yep. It a bit easier Melissa thank you so much for joining us today um, do you have any questions for the group? Uh, today is a open discussion. We can help brainstorm ideas with you, or if you have any questions, we can also help you find solutions. Um, the day is coming. Thank you. Didn't quite. I'm sorry, say that one more time. No questions, thank you. No questions, okay. Um, so today what we're focusing on is providing library services to hard to reach locations um, and we've discussed a little bit about book vending machines uh, thinking about staffing and how to get the services there as well as book vending machines don't advertise themselves um, and some of the other stuff we've started looking at is programming ideas on how to kind of get present in those sections of the community and the other um, again it's been out for a good ages and ages of course is the books by the books by mail in other words not just for the talking book side but for um, just mailing them out and whenever we did that in Jefferson County it worked for, again way before the technology there's so much more you can do now but way before the technology that worked really well with the youth uh, folks they're the ones who often would order the uh, paperback books and I know that um Orlando and, and probably others actually mail out the request that you can now you just request it through the catalog and they'll mail out the, the books the actual bestsellers or whatever so that's certainly another another um, way to to do to do outreach and we used to I used to do um, puppet shows out of the back end of my little Vega car on the side of the road in in um, in oh, Wakala County mm -hmm. at the time and um, so it really with doing outreach it's it's as big as your imagination <laughs> <laughs> and and your resources and all that but there's definitely lots of ways that you could do things that um, are different and put a different and, you, and to get out to the um, you know populations uh, now other craft things to do in order to get like traditional library services not just outreach um, I was up in Ohio a few weeks back actually about a year back at this point um, and I saw in each of the restaurants in the little town that I was in had a small milk crate that had books in it with a book plate in there saying provided by the local public library um, and it was to give parents something an activity to do with their children as they were waiting to get into the restaurant so they had stories that they could use cool yeah, I think that's been a l more like at health departments or your doctor, you know, places like that have have thought more of, of, about that rather than that's that's not interesting as far as restaurants go. Mm -hmm. um, another a way of, of getting out, 
they, and I didn't see this yesterday, but there was a um, webinar, live webinar on doing um, book discussions with um, with folks who are mentally, you know, sort of mentally challenged, and they would do them like in, in restaurants and, you know, really providing a whole social experience that mm -hmm. is very difficult for uh, folks who are sort of in that category to um, experience. So I read an article about it and it really was that interesting and I, I'm going to watch the recording of the, the webinar. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly another another way, way to reach out to um, to folks. Yeah, that's another good option. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, again um, since I do more with literacy, uh, taking your collection out to adult education classes, mm -hmm. you know, the, the folks who are working on getting their high school diploma. Um, again, now it's a lot, you know, filled with the technology, you know, side of things. There's just so much that, that really could be done, mm -hmm. um, you know, in that, that venue, you're taking it out. And having a, um, I have found it works a lot better to do outreach stuff to, is to have a partner that can bring a natural audience. Because right. it can, can be difficult depending on the scheduling of when you do it. And so if you have a partner to bring people in, that's another nice way to, to really make it work. Right. Um, other great ways to kind of help get your services out into those kind of communities. Typically, um, even rural communities are going to have to have uh, schools somewhere out in that area. Um, places where their children get to uh, go and get educated. Those school librarians and um, and schools themselves have to have parent-teacher nights. And that is a great opportunity to have either a rotating family collection within the um, school library setting where you can bring materials that are for the whole family. And on their parent-teacher nights or their welcoming nights, sign people up for library cards and you can connect mm -hmm. your school librarian there and um, do a partnership with them to see about maybe having a either a pickup point for materials or a a small rotating collection stored within their part their library um, which could be a great partnership opportunity yeah that's that's a real natural good certainly good partnership there absolutely um, and I know Jacksonville Public Library and a few other public libraries have um, educator library cards um, and that is a real good um, way to help teachers be able to provide library services or utilize the library more with their teaching materials yeah and what's nice with that is that it can be a collection that because it's a teacher card, they're not necessarily held absolutely responsible. They can have a card that's personal, and then they can have a card as a teacher, and that that's a nice way to split that up so they're not feeling the responsibility um, of you know books disappearing and then them being liable uh, for them. Right. Um, and some of this, especially if you're doing a collection that you take out somewhere and just leave, uh, like those milk crates, those collections are one of those where you have to be willing to lose the material. Yeah. Because uh, things will happen to it, and that's okay. Um, yeah. I've been able to fill those collections completely off of donations before. Um, and the other way to do it is the little free libraries. Uh, those are a fantastic add-on that is showing up more and more. And your library can kind of start the idea and start it moving. Um, when it comes to building the little free libraries, um, there's places where you can purchase them from. There's also the option of getting your local Boy Scouts or local woodworking group to help you out with that, um, as there is a Boy Scout merit badge for building such things, um, which can kind of get you started. Another um, um, location that hasn't come up uh, this afternoon is your senior centers, mm -hmm. meals sites. You know, that's one of the places that we would uh, take books 
books too. Um, and the interesting part is thinking through how you would use some of the iPads or our iPhone, you know, some of the technologies to make it. Um, folks would need to have, be comfortable with that venue, so that means they may need to have training, like me. But um, but that certainly makes it a lot easier to some degree to, um, like, what's really cool is somehow you could virtually carry a bag of books out <laughs> through the technology and helps people, you know, check them out via the ebook side of things. And you wouldn't have to lug bags of books around like I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so it just seems that the whole interesting part, and I don't know how this fits into outreach, but it seems like it should, is the checking out a person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of having a, um, a catalog of people that have, you know, experiences or expertise or whatever. I mean, you have to develop all your policies around that, but that certainly um, is, is another thing that, that folks are doing. Yeah, that one's coming up quite a bit these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, it certainly is. Um, another uh, activity that we would do, and generally this would be in our branch libraries across our rural Florida, but um, a quilt fair, you could you could do that in any kind of location. You need to go out and you have a, sort of a competition and and uh, have the a quilt exhibit for you know, for a day, and uh, that's certainly quilting and crafting and all that's gotten, it's it's so popular. Mm -hmm. And it was probably one of our best programs, really got lots and lots of visibility when we did it in Bluntstown. Yeah, we should have some pretty good um, reach with that nowadays, especially with some of the maker fest and people are looking mm -hmm. back at how to relearn some of those things right right mm -hmm. yeah I, I think that yeah it's just interesting how things circle around but yeah making doing whatever you can to make the to have the library be a fun interesting place whether it's at the building or out at the local um um farm or we actually went to um, when I was in Jefferson County we went out to the um, where they sold cattle you uh -huh. know the what do you call it auction like the cattle auction kind of thing that they had over there in Monticello mm -hmm. and would um, with that we were doing more of issuing library cards but you again again if you had the right stuff and see this is where this is where now that libraries are doing checking out rakes and checking out music ukuleles and checking out all that kind of stuff that's the kind of stuff you should take out and mix it up with the collection because then you're going to start really getting some visibility mm -hmm. outside the building and then people will start coming inside once they see you know the, um, the kinds of things that that you've got that are is very different from uh, when it was mostly books. Right. Um, other things to think about, um, partnering with your county parks and recreation groups. Um, yep. Many times we've got parks out in rural areas, um, be they state parks or um, county parks, um, and we'll have park benches and those kind of things, but those areas may not traditionally have good access to internet. So that might be a place where a library can work with the park group to host a um, hotspot or a Wi-Fi access point and just name it, you know, provided by the public library uh, yep. just to help people see that. And I, I know Gadsden County over here in Quincy is uh, looking at building a partnership with the local state park. I gather they were doing some things across the state in Georgia, and and you and we we have done some similar things in the past, but at this point, at statewide, the state park system has not been interested. There have been a, a state of flux, like all of us.
I think the No worries, Jennifer. Have you been able to hear any of the discussion ongoing or the phone call kind of caught you up in that? Just in case we were sparking any questions or ideas for you. And the other, um, you know, what hasn't been talked about is the use of volunteers. Um, certainly the Meals on Wheels in Columbia County at one point, they would actually um, deliver the books along with the food. Uh, and, you know, that would be often through really the Meals on Wheels volunteers, but you could actually develop in um, your own cohort of, of um, volunteers that, that could basically go out. And going to senior centers, they often have a, uh, a recreation, a person who's responsible for recreation. And if you could, we checked out um, program kits, bifocal kits, uh, to the rec person who then could take that out and easily do a program. So there's some ways you can really do interesting things in small places that don't cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer, you were saying that you guys were thinking about doing the Meals on Wheels. What uh, sparked that idea for you all? And just as a reminder to everyone, uh, nobody is muted. If you want to speak out loud and would love to hear your voice, go ahead and jump right in. Uh, Jennifer is saying that they have so many assisted living facilities popping up. So serving older adults uh, will be the next focus. And homebound services are very much needed. OK, fantastic. Um, yeah, they really are. In a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the Collier County Literacy Program at the library actually would go into assisted living, I think it was more assisted living than, than certainly nursing homes, and actually train the people who live there to tutor the people who work there. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is down where they, a lot of um, non-English speakers, so that would be, and so that helped equal, equalize the relationship. You know, when you're so dependent, when you're old and you're so dependent on someone, you know, taking care of you, being able to give back. Jennifer, this is uh, Emily Hart. I believe we might have talked about this um, last fall a little bit, but um, in case this is a different Jennifer, um, one of the things that I have found is that the, the Florida Council on Aging has these regional offices. I believe they have six or seven um, throughout Florida, and usually it's it's titled something like the Area Council of Aging. I know the one for, say, North Florida is, you know, uh, ACANF, um, but they are typically connected within all the, the networks of assisted living facilities, um, senior centers, different types of, of outreach activities, and they kind of go um, across different healthcare organizations too. They're really good at uh, navigating across the boundaries of different types of institutions, and they can be really helpful at um, figuring out who the, the local people are to talk to. Yeah, that's a great that's a great suggestion, Emily, um, to, to work with the network out there. And so it also makes me think about the um, 4-H and IFAS, you know, that's out of the University of Florida. That's another natural one where they're out and about um, uh, doing things and have some natural audiences. So Jennifer was saying that theirs is located in the Senior Center. Um, and the Senior Center is actually the group who runs the Meals on Wheels program. So that is a very wonderful partnership and a fantastic way to do it. The other thing that you might think about and another partnership opportunity would be your um, local home health group. Um, 
who have the ability to get to some of those patrons as well. And they're always looking for things to do to lift their patient's spirit and perhaps a rotating collection of books or the ability to come with some reading materials would be very helpful. Or listening materials as well. So this might be a good talking books connection as well. Are there any other populations that um, people are thinking about trying to reach or areas that you're trying to get to um, that you might think might be geographically challenging? Um, we have a library literacy planning committee and uh, one of the people on the planning committee, actually the Haitian population has basically been an audience that um, that they're trying to get to parents. And that's certainly a challenging when you work with audiences who, um, you know, don't have the experience of growing up with with reading and books and libraries. It, it, it takes a lot to, to make it interesting and fun and appealing uh, mm -hmm. to adults. Well, that, and also um, teaching what the library concept is sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I know that I just recently saw they're going to be doing some research on programming and the impact of programming. You know, we've always been so good at counting numbers, but not so good at impact. and. Um, you know, what is a program, and uh, so I noticed that's happening out there in the nationally. I know that um, Rosa Rodriguez was mentioning recently uh, as part of her conversation about the uh, Deaf Literacy Center, and I'm sorry, but the, the location is escaping me right at this moment, that one of their early hurdles was the, the core concept of library use um, and that they'd had a group of people um, who were not coming from a library background and who they were having difficulty um, communicating with um, who would come in and use library services but not understand that um, you actually have to bring library books back because they were having difficulty uh, speaking the language in that case the language being uh, sign language to, to communicate with those patrons. So even though these people were presenting as normal patrons and you make the assumption that kind of everybody knows what a life, some of the core concepts are about checking books out and returning them, that you can't even start with that baseline assumption. Mm -hmm. And they realized that that was a failure of communication and a failure on their part rather than um, getting into it too deeply and started to try to bridge that gap Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer is saying that they have created a community center within the Hispanic community um, that is lacking uh, transportation and they have a library exhibit at the local children's museum. Oh, um, nice. What stuff did you put in that collection at the um, children's museum, Jennifer? Yes, I am also very curious about this library exhibit. Mainly picture books for younger kids, um, story time kits as well that can circulate. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, we will eventually have a mock library set up for the kids um, to play library as well as a self. <laughs> 
That's a cute idea. That is wonderful. Oh. oh my gosh, you could have, sorry, this is Emily and I'm just taking away with how <laughs> cute that sounds. Um, <laughs> yeah. You could have the little uh, date stamps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> which I know are totally outdated now, but still fun. <laughs> still fun. Uh, Jennifer says exactly. <laughs> and you're making lifelong, you know, library users right there. That's incredible. That is, and cool. librarians too, future librarians. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that might be a great use of. Uh, if anyone still has a bunch of the uh, placeholder books um, where you could set things up to where the kids can put them in order and just have it to where the placeholder books are the, just the alphabet on their spine and let the kids put those in order. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer saying you... they themed the story time kits for parents to check out on the museum's exhibits. Okay. I really want to see pictures of this now. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> and Jennifer says she can certainly send some. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We would be happy to receive those and to share them out um, and let people see the wonderful things that you guys have come up with. Um, Melissa, is there anything you would like to share um, coming from what you guys are doing over in Lee County or any groups that you guys are hoping to reach? Okay, Melissa is saying she's fairly new to her position and is trying to absorb new ideas right now. Okay, well, let's see if we can't help uh, Melissa get a, a whole list of new ideas and opportunities. Um, I know you guys have a bookmobile and do a ton of outreach already. Oh, fantastic, Melissa. What kind of um, outreach things are you guys currently doing? That way we don't repeat things for you. And while she's working on that, um, what are some of the interesting outreach things we've heard recently? Um, oh, one of my favorites that we heard recently is, um, oh, Sandy, it was during one of your discussions. We started talking about marketing and doing the coasters at restaurants happen mm, to have right. the public library. Do we remember who did that? Hmm. I I don't right off, but yeah, the I guess coasters and placemats and mm -hmm. you know, just some interesting things certainly with the marketing. Yeah. The um and on marketing and this wouldn't be rural, but um, you know, the bus system would be a natural place to market for urban. This is very true. Um, one of the, this is Emily, uh, one of the things that I've been seeing a lot is um, just the community partnerships, mm -hmm. um, specifically with some of the like workforce development um, organizations are really featuring, you know, and you can get, take this into the public library to complete it or they'll help you with it. That communication can always be improved there, but um, it's a partnership that is doing a lot of representative work for the libraries in a lot of the rural counties. That's awesome. Uh, so Melissa is telling us that they do school and community events. Um, they have talking books libraries and by mail as well. 
and she's interested in out of the box new creative ideas. They are currently wrapping the buses in their area with library ads, which is cool. phenomenal and fantastic. Um, out of the box thinking. Hmm. A boat mobile. A what? Mobile? Actually, a boat mobile. Yeah, particularly for Florida, depending. Go around to you know they're not exactly the audience you're trying to go after, but well, it could be if it was down in Apalachicola, with all the oyster, or the poor folks down there that don't can't get oysters anymore. But that certainly would be. Melissa, I I am. This is Casey with. Bureau of Library Development. I am curious um, about the logistics for your your books by mail. Um, if there were another library interested in sort of picking up that um, that method, I'm sure there's a lot of logistics because you have to account for postage and time to to get those ready to go mailed out. Can you sort of share a little bit about how you all, if you know, I know you said you're new, um, but how you all work that out logistically and financially where you fit that in? Um, Melissa says, sure. Our books by mail librarian is Lisa Koch. And or cook, I'm sorry. And I can share her contact information out. And one of the aspects of that is if somebody is um, disabled, you know, um, <clears throat> they can actually you can get free postage for even books like regular books. There's there's a way that that can be done, um, and uh, so that can at least help some on the on the cost. Okay. Um, some of the other out-of-the-box thinking, um, I know there is a library, I believe in California, that got one of those little trailers that they make for parents to tote the kids behind the bicycle, and they uh, got some Boy Scouts to convert it for them into a little book thing. And they have a volunteer, a local cyclist enthusiast, um, who will cycle the boardwalk and deliver book materials and resources that way. And I believe they partnered with their local biking club. Um, hmm. And uh, the cyclists will come pick up the trailer and go out to different events, cycling around and uh, distributing library materials. Cool. And if they put beach tires on that bike, they could get, uh, or on that trailer, they could get some pretty right. good mileage. Yeah. In Florida. Oh, yeah. Especially, especially on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most certainly. I wonder if anybody has done anything in the sense of NASCAR, you know, Race, you know, some events like that that are men, more men oriented, and and then trying to figure out how to package it so it's appealing. I know with reading about doing book discussions that that men prefer them to not be in the library; they'd rather be at a cafe or something. When I've been reading up on that, right. Well, even the more interesting thing, a lot of guys don't realize especially like NASCAR gentlemen um, made me think about auto repair stuff. A lot mm -hmm. of auto repair individuals don't realize that the library can help them learn their craft even better or have resources for them. And yep. new libraries um, have some material, but um, maybe haven't kept up with the most recent model of cars uh, with some of their repair manuals. So that might be a good opportunity to connect with your groups like um, 
if your high school still has an AutoCAD class or a driving school and get them to be able to come in and do some programming or even go out in the community and host programming on basic car maintenance. Mm -hmm. Or um, be able to do a display on what kind of materials are available. So, so this is Emily. Mm -hmm. um, since we're talking about sort of trying to capture uh, a slightly less traditional audience, there was um, something that captured some imaginations here in our office recently. Uh, but I don't know how much attention it got throughout the state of the manatee public libraries and their, their circulating uh, rods and reels checkout program, which they uh, basically they had a hundred kits that were provided um, free from Fish and Wildlife. Um, and it seems to be primarily used, at least anecdotally, by uh, people who live down in the area who are retired and who might be have a relative or a friend coming into town who they want to go out fishing with and hmm. um, who they don't necessarily want to buy a whole rod and reel set because I guess those can be somewhat expensive. And so the, the Manatee County Public Library now has um, this, this rod and reel checkout program and they do uh, some educational programming based around um, fish and wildlife but also um, they've gotten a lot of really positive press and um, it's a pretty interesting example of, I think something that is fairly low cost for the library, but is getting a lot of attention in their area. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got about 10 more minutes that we've set aside. Um, does anyone else have any questions? We've just been joined by uh, Ron. Uh, Ron, is there a group or a uh, question that you have burning that you are hoping to be able to get some ideas in order to be able to provide services for them or services to a particular area? <laughs> not now. Okay, not a problem. Um, having an open discussion like this kind of leaves us up for that. Okay, not a problem. Uh, so some of the stuff we we're looking at is uh, places you could partner with to get services out to different areas. Um, I see here that you work with the technology side of things a little bit. Um, so one of the ones that we discussed earlier that might be helpful to you is partnering with like your local parks and recreation crew and being able to um, host Wi-Fi stations or network connections out in the local parks uh, that just name it provided by the local public library, um, which can help get the word out and also get your community a little bit more internet access. As well as. Out of curiosity, Melissa, what are some of the um, images that you guys used for the uh, bus wraps? I know that's one thing when we're doing ads, we tend to um, stumble upon what would we display to catch people's attention so that they uh, will notice the ads as well as gain the information from them. Oh, and Ron is having a lot of success with little free libraries popping up everywhere. Um, the little free libraries are fantastic and wonderful. Um, we have many of them popping up here around Leon County as well and all over the state. So I'm glad to hear that you guys are um, running into that down in Santa Rosa.
And Melissa is saying that they are fortunate to have a designer on staff. And they keep it simple with their contact information, phone, email, etc. And one word messaging to click, call, and visit. Very nice. The um, Alachua Library has partnership libraries where they actually have social service um, services uh, in the same building with the library. Mm -hmm. I visited uh, one in Gainesville. And you walk through the door, and if you walk, go to the right, it's where the social services are. If you go to the left, it's the library. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and Melissa was saying that the interior messaging um, for their marketing is targeted more at programming information or any big events, which is a good use of that space. Uh, the little... Free libraries. Hmm. There's a fantastic one on one of my hiking trails that I go by where they um, partnered it as a little free library, but it's also got um, several picnic tables set up and kind of arts and crafts built around some of the books that were actually featured in the little library. So you can stop and do a small story time with your family, but you also have arts and crafts that go along with those stories. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa is saying they use uh, little free libraries in their, oh, she's used the little free library in a past job in Texas with success in places like community centers, laundry mats, Laundry mats and parks. Oh, the laundry mat is a really good idea. Um, I've seen a few where they set up uh, Wi-Fi in the laundry mat that was hosted by the public library as well, um, as well as signage for like homework help and those kind of things. Um, we're on a there are. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say there are a couple of different organizations that are uh, sort of trying to organize this, um, both laundromats and, and barber shops, having little free libraries or um, usually sponsored by uh, Rotary or other types of organizations like that. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to setup costs for these kind of things, uh, keep in mind to check with your local Rotary group and other organi community organizations like that who typically have community um, kind of grant programs that can help you out. Um, and Ron Strickland is saying that all of their libraries have free Wi-Fi, and he sees people there during days when they're closed parked in the building um, so that they can have access. Now, Ron, do you guys, since you've noticed that, have you started putting the Wi-Fi nodes closer to the walls so that they don't have to get as close to the building? Um, I know one of the libraries I worked for, you had to be leaning against the wall to get uh, a good signal. <laughs> uh, so after we noticed more people were coming out and trying to get good signal, we made sure that it could reach all the way across the parking lot. Okay, and uh, Ron is saying that they limit the signal strength so they um, park close by. Okay. Now, do you guys have any signage on the outside of your building that might um, point them at some of the resources that might help them with the projects they're working on? I know uh, many of the patrons I caught sitting out like that was last minute homework research for a kid. Um, who didn't tell them the project was starting until bedtime showed up. Um, so some signage on the outside of the building might be helpful pointing out the homework assistance. Okay. Ron is saying no at the moment, but the passcode is very simple once they visit. Okay. Let's 
That sounds like that was a, a nice um, passive opportunity that uh, sort of grew organically for you guys. And Ron, have you ever checked to see if your passcode might have shown up on, say, Reddit or Yelp? Um, I know that's happened more than once to a few libraries. Hmm. And Melissa, did we give you enough good ideas or are there a few other groups that you're hoping to kind of get some ideas for? Um, it's easier for us to brainstorm if we kind of have a target that we're shooting for. Okay. Um, and we are also all here at the Bureau of Development available for you guys anytime you need us. Uh, feel free to pick up the phone, call any one of us if you just want a brainstorming session or more information of what is being done around the site. And we are at the top of the hour. We are about one minute from our three o'clock timeline. That's not necessarily a, we have to end it at that point, but if, if you guys have any burning questions, but if you do not at this point, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope to see you online next month when we are having a discussion about STEM and stream programming and getting ideas from those around the state as well as what we've seen about those programs.